Jehanilo Premandana Karuna Prachu E no prabhu kota gela chayataku. Kahamora swaru prupa kahasanata. Kadasa Ragunata Patita Pava Kahamoram Bhatta Juga Kahakavira Eka kale kota gela gora natara. Eka kale kota gela gora natara. Pasha bo Kolangangu nera nidhi kotangele pambo Se samba sangira sangi jeko lobila Se sangana paya kande narutamada Se sangana paya kande He no prabhu kota gela chayataku. Jaya Vaishnav Prabhu Vaishnav Taku Vaishnav Taku Jaya Vaishnav Taku. He who brought the treasure of divine love and who was filled with compassion and mercy, where has such a personality as Shunivas Acharya gone? Where are my Sarup Damodar and Rupa Goswami? Where is Sanatan? Where is Raghunathas, the savior of the fallen? Where are my Raghunath Bhatta and Gopal Bhatta? And where is Krishna Das Kaviraj? Where did Lord Goranga, the great dancer, suddenly go? I will smash my head against a rock and enter into fire. Where will I find Lord Goranga, the reservoir of all wonderful qualities? Being unable to obtain the association of Lord Goranga, accompanied by all of these devotees in whose association he performed his pastimes, Nartam Das simply weeps. Okay. Thank you. So today, being the disappearance day of Sri Madhavendra Puri, We'll read about him first. Uh, let's see.
Okay. What is it? Before Lord Chaitanya appeared, he sent his eternal associates like Sri Advaita Acharya, Sri Jagannath Mishra, Sachi Mata, Madhavendra Puri, Ishwar Puri to earth. Sri Madhavendra Puri took initiation from Sri Lakshmi Pati Tirtha in the Madhvacharya Sampradaya. He had many disciples, but Sri Advaita Acharya and Sri Ishwar were the chief uh, disciples of him. In one way or another, all the Vaishnavas in Bengal and Jagannath Puri were connected with Sri Madhavendra Puri. After Lord Chaitanya came, many of his disciples joined Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan movement. Many of Madhavendra Puri's disciples joined Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan movement. This is from Vrindavanas Thakur, assumedly the Chaitanya Bhagavan. Madhavendra Puri's body was completely full of divine love. So were, so were those of his followers. He displayed uncommon love of God. Seeing a dark blue rain cloud, he would fall down unconscious. Day and night, he was intoxicated from drinking the ambrosia of Krishna Prema. After making an extensive pilgrimage of Bharata Bhumi, India, he passed his life in Vrindavan and Orissa. He began the restoration work of Vrindavan that Sri Rupa and Sanatana Goswamis continued later, wandering from grove to grove, remembering Radha Krishna's sweet Vrindavan pastimes, Madhavendra Puri would faint in ecstasy. In a dream, this is recounted in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, in a dream, Sri Gopal ordered Madhavendra Puri to uncover a buried Gopal deity and install him atop Govardhan Hill. Madhavendra Puri celebrated Gopal's installation with an Anakuta, a grand festival offering a mountain of food to Krishna. This Anakuta festival, also called Govardhan Puja, is one of the most important Vaishnava festivals in Vrindavan, in India and around the world. The original Gopal deity, known as Sri Nathji, is now worshipped in Natwar, Natwar, Rajasthan. Madhavendra Puri introduced the conception of Madhurya Bhava, conjugal love, into the Madhvacharya Sampradaya, conjugal love between Radha and Krishna. Madhavendra Puri sowed the seed of Prema Bhakti, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became the towering tree dropping honey sweet fruits of Prema upon everyone. He also revealed, Madhavendra Puri also revealed Viraha Bhava, the mood of love established or relished in separation from God. His branch of the Madhva sect distinguished itself by this ecstatic love of God. It is known as the Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya. That's our Sampradaya. In Jagannath Puri, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed an intense mood of Viraha Bhava, Bhava, that's love and separation. Uh, this increased unlimitedly when the Lord heard verses from Srimad Bhagavatam's 10th canto, the Krishna Karnamrita, the Gita Govinda, uh, and the love poems of Chandidas and Vidyapati. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Viraha, or separation, begins with a single verse spoken by Madhavendra Puri, his Param Guru. Grand preceptor. And anyone who knows the verse can chant along with me. Aidi Nadayad Nata He Matoda Nata Kadaba Loki Se Vidyam Toda Loka Katadam Tayata Brahm Tikinkaro Miham. This is Chaitanya Charitam in the Madhya 4, 197. O compassionate Lord of the poor and humble, O Lord of Mathura, when shall I see you again? Without seeing you, because of my not seeing you, my heart has become very much afflicted. Oh, my beloved, I am overwhelmed. What shall I do now? Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj says that as the diamond Kaustaba jewel is the most precious amongst all rare valuable jewels, this shloka is the Rasa Kavya, the best verse in the entire treasury of Rasa poetry. Actually, this verse was spoken first by Srimati Radharani herself, it was Radha's pathetic cry to Shamasunda, who had gone to Mathura, leaving her alone, des desperate in Vrindavan. Srimati Radharani's mercy brought this same verse from the mouth of Madhavendra Puri. Reciting even a few words of the sloka would tear open the door of Mah Mahaprabhu's ecstatic love, making him swoon in ecstasy, falling unconscious. Feeling intense separation from Krishna, Madhavendra Puri constantly chanted this verse when departing this world. 
Krishna Das Kabiraj says that with this verse, Madhavendra Puri teaches devotees how to achieve Krishna Prema by cultivating intense feelings of separation from Sri Krishna. Gaudiya Vaishnavas accept this verse, that this verse expresses the essence of the mood of separation. The Gaudiya Sampradaya teaches that worship of Radha and Krishna in separation represents the highest level of devotional service. At this stage of realization, the devotee feels completely, quote, vacant in the world in absence of Krishna. A moment without Madhava feels like a millennium. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu always swam. Does that verse, does that description call the minor verse? We can chant it together. Yugayatang Nameshena Chakshusha Pravashahitam Shunyahitam Jagat Savam Govinda Vidahe Name. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu always swam in the ocean of Divyon Mara Mahabhava, the maddened ecstatic emotions shown by Sri Radha in the Brahmara Gita. Shrimad Bhagavatam, that's a, bo- a song to a bee that she sang <coughs> in separation when Uddhava visited Vrindavan. That's chapter 47 of the 10th canon. In this verse, Madhavan Puri discloses similar emotions. The Gaudiya Vaishnavas conclude that the monsoon shower of ecstatic love exhibited by Lord Goranga during his manifest pastimes began with Madhavan Puri. It then came through Ishwara Puri, who played the role of Lord Chaitanya's spiritual master. Madhavan Puri Samadhi is in Ramuna. Orissa, near the temple of Chirachora Gopinath. Sri Madhavendra Puri Ki Jai. Okay, let us move to Srimad Bhagavatam. So I have, is it text 13? I th- it's 14, isn't it? 14? Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. On this 14th day of March 2022 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. We are in Canto 5, the creative impetus. Chapter 14, The Material World as the Great Forest of Enjoyment. Text number 14. Yadatu parabhadya bhadyanda atmane no panamatita dahi pitraputta varhishmataha pitraputran sva sakalu bhakshayati. Translation. In this material world, when the conditioned soul cannot arrange for his own maintenance, despite exploiting others, he tries to exploit his own father or son, taking away that relative's possessions, although they may be very insignificant. If he cannot acquire things from his father, son, or other relatives, he is prepared to give them all kinds of trouble. Purport. Once we actually saw a distressed man steal ornaments from his daughter just to maintain himself. As the English proverb, proverb goes, necessity knows no law. When a conditioned soul needs something, he forgets his relationship with his relatives and exploits his own father or son. We also receive information from Srimad Bhagavatam that in this age of Kali, the time is quickly approaching when a relative will kill another relative for a small farthing. Without Krishna consciousness, people will deteriorate further and further into a hellish condition wherein they will perform abominable acts. Om Jnana Timurandasya Jnanandana Shalakaya Chakshu Unmilitam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So because of the uh, Madhavendra Puri's uh, disappearance, I read that and I didn't say my verses, so I think I should say them now. Because... Is that okay, Vijay? Narayanam namaskritya Narayanam namaskritya Devim sarasvatim vyasam Tato jayam hadiriyet Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, we should offer our respectful obeisances unto Lord Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, unto Nara Narayan Rishi, the Supermost Human Being, unto Mother Saraswati, the Goddess of Learning, unto Srila Vyasadeva, the author, and unto Srila Prabhupada, the Translator Commentator, 
and our spiritual master. Nashta Prayasha Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavatyuttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki by regular attendance and classes on Srimad Bhagavatam and by rendering devotional service to the pure devotee, all that is inauspicious within the heart is destroyed almost to nil, and loving devotion to the Supreme Lord, who is glorified in transcendental songs, is established as an irrevocable fact. So we're hearing more and more about the forest of enjoyment, and uh, if you're interested, you can trace all of these back to the previous chapter when the analogy was, or allegory was spoken. Now what strikes me here is how uh, when one is deeply under the modes of nature and is um, concerned about his own needs above all, which is what this is all about, then the normal attractions and normal feelings for relatives, for friends, here is a father, a son, and Prabhupada mentioned about the daughter being uh, subject to being sto uh, ornament stolen by her father. Uh, then those natural ties uh, lose their strength. And one descends to practically an animalistic level where you read about, uh, I, I always remember this when I learned this as a, as a, as a child, that the uh, praying mantis, after, after having sex, the, the, the female eats the male. You know, Black widow also. Black widow also. And... Uh, what is that? Other, other animals do that? Anyway, it's, it's, uh, it, so what, what, what is being illustrated here is how w in the material world, if you don't have the process of devotional service, you don't have association with saintly persons, then you can, th there's no bottom to how degraded you can become. And the the very uh, and w what is the great contrast? I was just thinking this as I was reading this uh, verse in purport. Arjun, Arjun was faced. Uh, this is the culmination of all these years, the building up of the the, the the war and the need for the war, and they were cheated, they were threatened, they were they were attempted murder against them, and yet those ties that he had to the other kurus. You know, the sons of Dhritarashtra, there was a blood tie there, and his friends and relatives. Uh, he prioritized that at first. He felt that's that's more important than than you know getting the kingdom, which will be just horrible for me because it'll be soaked with the blood of those I love, like that. So he's illustrating, as Prabhupada writes in the commentary, the the, the soft heart of a Vaishnav, and uh, real the human traits. Uh, of course, there's a higher calculation here in the Bhagavad Gita, and finally he transcends those bodily uh, traits. But even the, even the normal bodily relations uh, are, disappear and are negated when someone is so much controlled by the modes of ignorance and the knowledge is, is destroyed and it becomes more, no, worse than an animal. You know, even most animals, I mean, we give a few examples, they're very protective like all we, we always hear in the, in the Bhagavatam, in the 10th canon, about how the cows love their calves so much. And, and uh, you know, they're very protective of them. And that's true for any animal. There has to be some kind of affection there in normal circumstances for them to raise them and care about them, what to speak of human beings. So this is just by illustration that we get one verse after another of how this material world is, is by its very nature, is degrades you. And uh, covers, the covering just becomes so thick that normal uh, relationships are, are, are destroyed. And we see this on a larger level where you have, you know, uh, whole countries uh, whipping up their, their population to hate some other country. And then they'll perform all kinds of atrocities. We, we, we heard, you know, we, all of us grew up, we, we know about the World War II and the Holocaust and all these things on the basis of uh, race, basically race, Jewish race. They have to be exterminated. And they would, they would dehumanize, call them vermin and all these different things so that they, somehow you could get people to perform these horrible acts. And it's happening today. It's happening today where even the normal 
Um, you know, they, o- over the years, they tried to establish uh, rules of war. You know, the war crimes, there's a, there's a, there's a court, international court. But they, the, the, the rules are, are still constantly uh, broken. They have these things called cluster bombs, which are, which are just uh, designed to kill as many people as possible. I think we use these in Vietnam. But they've been outlawed, you know. But you have to sign, the countries have to sign on to them that then we, we accept this rule. Now they're being used in uh, Ukraine, kill as many people as possible. Innocent people, children, doesn't matter. You know, terror, it's a terror weapon. They're supposedly outlawed, but they, can, they can't because people sink down to the level of, of subhuman and they'll do anything to, uh, for self-aggrandizement and all these different things. So the, 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 the problem is, is that nobody's immune to this. You know, we, we, devotees wouldn't even step on an ant necessarily. You know, the, the, the famous transformation of the uh, Mrigari. Notice the pronunciation. There's no second R in there. For years, we all Mr. Mrigari, right? Didn't you hear about Mrigari? <laughs> anyway, Mrigari means the enemy of the animals. That's what it means. Mriga is animal in general, deer specifically, but animal in general. So, but, so he met Narada Muni. And he had, he had learned from his father you know, this, this technique of hunting to, to, kill, to shoot the animals so that they would be half dead and be writhing in pain in the forest, you know. And this was a regular thing. Why? I don't know. To keep them fresher? Who knows? Or just out of the sheer joy of causing pain to others? That's another thing. You, know, you can go all the way over into the complete sadistic side. So Narada Muni was, was uh, shocked by this. He's wandering in the forest and he sees this, this rabbit is writhing in agony with an arrow in him, and this deer is writhing in agony. You know, it's just, it's just, you can imagine seeing that. Any human being would feel affected. What to speak of a soft hearted Vaishnava? So finally, he comes along, Magari, and was, obviously he was the hunter who was responsible, but he confirmed it. And, and, are you responsible? For this? Yes. So why don't you at least kill them outright instead of this? You know? So this is the way I was trained. You know? This is my father trained me. This is our Sampradaya. You know? So, <laughs> so Narada Muni, uh, through his mystic power, uh, he, he warned him that you know you're you're going to suffer like anything after this. And then he showed him some of the animals waiting in the sky, or you know, in a subtle, you know, he showed that they were just waiting to get their talons into you, and when you die, you know, and, and, and get revenge. In other words, what goes around comes around. Law of karma. So that got his attention. And uh, he said, but I can, I can give you a process by which you can be delivered from this suffering. And uh, so Mugari was very interested in that. But you have, to, you have to agree to break your bow. In other words, you have to give up this, this uh, endeavor, this, your, your livelihood that you get. And I can save you. So he agreed and he gave him the Hare Krishna mantra and the process of devotion. And he took it up and he became completely transformed. And famously, some time later, and he, so he, so he and already instructed him, okay, you sell everything you have, you and your wife, don't worry about maintenance, you just chant Hare Krishna, and, and you know, like that. So they did, just like the prostitute of uh, Haridas Thakur. And they were transformed. The process can purify, purify anyone. Did I miss something? Can you use microphone? Yeah. The, I'll, I'll repeat the question. The question was about King Prachina Barishat. Wasn't he also shown that? I think there was something there like that also. Where he, yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, the idea is that, well, we don't, we don't all get that. So, so he was transformed. Later on, Narada Muni came with Parvat Muni, his friend, to visit one of his disciples. And it was this uh, Magari, who's no longer Magari. He's, you know, Mukundadas or something. So he, uh, as they were approaching his little hut, you know, he recognized his spiritual master, so he got up and he was you know, taking his chatter and dancing, you know. And he wanted to offer obeisance, but he took the chatter and he was sweeping in front. And, he, you know, he wasn't, and what he was doing was getting the ants out of the way. He didn't even want to kill an ant or hurt an ant. This is the transformation that he went. So this is, this is a, one of the wonderful benefits of uh, taking up Krishna consciousness, is that, you know, in, in Bhagavad Gita, you learn that every living entity is a soul, just like you. 
they happen to be in that body due to their karma. They were ma they're making their way up the species, and they're, they're all, sen you know, sens sens sensate. In the end, they can feel pain. The, in, in ignorance, you make up a philosophy, oh, this, the cows don't have real souls, you know, so we can kill them. They don't really feel pain, you know, although it's obvious that they're feeling pain. In the service of your desires, you can distort reality and make up various myths, and we see that going on also. So uh, the, the danger is, is that without the, the uh, knowledge that's been given, the association to be inspiration, and the practice of devotional service, then the, these heavy, heavy modes and influences of your environment, and we're living in this Kali Yuga now, can impinge upon your consciousness. And you can lose the, the, uh, the faith in the process of devotional service. So none of us are immune to this until we, until we get to the point of pure devotional service. Uh, and so we should be very careful uh, not to allow our material desires to affect our devotional service and dilute it or start cutting, cutting corners. And inevitably we get affected by the modes of nature. And... First, first thing that happens, you commit offenses to devotees, and you can't be amongst devotees. You feel uncomfortable. And, and plus, you have so many other growing material interests. And uh, then you can... I mean, I've heard, very few, I've heard of very few devotees who actually went back to meat-eating, because that's kind of a basic thing, although that may happen also. But it's, uh, it's tragic to, to uh, try to come back in this world the way it's going, you know, it's practically on fire now. I mean, there's fires here, fires there. We should really be, be determined and look, you know, logically at trying to go back to God in this life. This is what Prabhupada wanted us to do back in the 60s and 70s when he was preaching. He, he uh, said, don't, don't tarry, don't waste time and hang out in this material world. It's too dangerous. And, you know, finish your business and go back to God in. So it takes a lot of determination, but uh, it's definitely the safest thing to do. And the safest thing to do is to always be chanting. I think the safest place, the Prabhupada said, is a Sankirtan party, to be immersed in, in Kirtan. Because the world is, is, is a dangerous place, padam padam yabibadam nadesham, we know that from the Shastra, and we know that from our own experience, and we can just see how, how dangerous it is. The dangers are there, the, for the body and for you know the threefold miseries and everything, but really it's the consciousness. The danger is that, that we may lose our way and not and and, and um, forget Krishna, and uh, instead of being very determined in the evening class, we're in the second chapter. We read we read that verse. Vavasayatmaka buddhi ekha kudunandanam bahushaki anantasta buddhayo abhisayanam. Very important verse. Prabhupada took inspiration, especially from the uh, purport there, the commentary by Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur, where he, he kind of gave the, the, the prime example of Vyabhasayat Makabhadi, which is this one pointed ekeha determination to be Krishna conscious and follow the principles. And that is to make the desire of the spiritual master one with your heart, be completely determined to follow that. And that, that was you know, Prabhupada's meditation. Uh, uh, both the, the, that original meeting where uh, Bhakti Siddhanta said, "Why don't you, you should preach? To, you know, the Westerners, you should preach in English." And uh, later on, the last instruction was to preach in English, and he understood is to go abroad. And Prabhupada, I've been listening to tapes, and he's describing this uh, verse: "Yasya uh, hamunagunami harashe tadhanangshanai," where Krishna says, "To those who I show my real mercy." I take away the accumulated wealth. It actually says gradually take away the accumulated wealth. And then the rest of the verse, which I forget, uh, the Sanskrit is that, and then their family members become disinterested in them because they can't approach them, uh, you know, for money. And so they're, it becomes uncomfortable and they have to you know, leave the family. And that's an important step, you know, break those ties and take sannyas. So Prabhupada identified with that verse. He identified with that verse. You know, he was very responsible. He was thought it, when he when Bhakti Zana would come to him in a dream and tell him to take sannyas, he said, I, I was horrified. You know, he still had his wife, he had his kids, he was uh, responsible, he had his business. But, you know, you read the Lama, did you see how that was, uh, what, you know. Then he, then he got the uh, uh, Jansi place, 
you know, where he could preach. And he had his first disciple, Acharya Prabhaka, Sanskrit scholar. And it was all going nicely. And he wasn't attending to his business. That was in the hands of his son, but there was starting to get trouble. There was a, there was a theft and the whole thing, you know. But, uh, but then he lost John C. He went back to the business. He had to try to repair it, you know, isn't it? But uh, by, great, by, by our great fortune, his wife wasn't into it, you know. And she <laughs> famously sold his Srimad Bhagavatam for tea biscuits. And Prabhupada says, well, it's the tea, tea or me. I think it was his Bhagavatam. No, the Bhagavad Gita manuscript disappeared. And I, I, I think I read recently in the Lilama that Prabhupada suspected it would be his family. I mean, who's going to steal the manuscript of the Bhagavad Gita? Because they were, they, you know, he was getting into the preaching more. He was going and, and more and more. They, they were against it. Anyway, it became impossible there. And so he left. They didn't know he was leaving for good because he was always going and coming. But this time he didn't come back. So, so, you know, this is the, the way in which Krishna will, will arrange one's life if one's really, you know, of course, Prabhupada is on a whole different level, uh, you know, supremely pure. Uh, but uh, Krishna also helps us. He helps everyone to, be, to, to stay, you know, within the community of devotees and practicing. But the material world, it's, a, it's, it's danger at every step. Padam padam yadvipadam natesham. So we have to be careful, and, and it helps to, you know, tremendously to uh, read Srila Prabhupada's books, Essential Practice. He was always emphasizing that, not only distributing, but reading. Uh, and uh, because that keeps us, it purifies the, the, the mind, the intelligence, it gives you faith, it gives you spiritual strength to continue following and to kick out impediments that may be uh, threatening your progress. So this... Uh, you know, this verse p paints a pretty bleak picture how one, the family ties will even be transgressed in the name of, you know, maintenance. When he wants, uh, yeah, his own maintenance, to arrange for his own maintenance despite exploiting others, he tries to exploit his own father or son. So that's what's going on here. Okay, any comments or questions? If not, we can read another one. Local or remote? Yes, I have a question. All right, we have a local uh, question or comment, so... You're, you're in the queue. Yes, I can wait. No problem. Thank you, Dravida Prabhu, for a wonderful class. Hare Krishna. Part one of this class. The, uh, <laughs> Bhakta Bob has this great line. Um, you're talking about devotees, maybe not usually, but might even go back to eating meat. They give up their Christian consciousness. Yeah. He says, your misery is always fully refundable. <laughs> <laughs> Stick to the path because if you know if you want it, it's it's right there. Yeah, for yeah, you it's it. always ready for you. Yeah. Um, you said something earlier about um, the example of the hunter who then has these, um, you know, the animals that he's killed in sport or food or whatever, waiting for him yeah. when he finished there. And now you have this vision, you know, they're waiting. Okay, well, my opportunity now to inflict this suffering that was imposed upon me. We have that picture in the Gita, you know, with the cow and the yeah, head and cow man. So yes. this you really brought up an interesting point about. You know, I know our guru will take our karma from us, and I know so many things. You said that take the Maha Mantra, Narada said to him, and you know you can be, you know be purified of these sins. So, what to speak of the other animals or life forms that we affect on our sinful path? Their suffering. If, if we're forgiven for that sin, what's the function of them having to undergo that suffering? Though, do, do they ultimately not? Because they felt it. Do you know what I mean? Like, why well, do yeah, they have I mean, to suffer? When we're forgiven later, do they eventually go, oh, he did it. Okay, I, don't, I didn't feel the hurt I felt. I'm going to leave this waiting zone. Well, well yeah, let, let, let's analyze this. In other words, they're, they're, they're being killed, say, for in a slaughterhouse or something. And we're eating the meat, so we're, that, that's our karma. Not, you know, there's so many who are involved in the, the act of slaughtering and then preparing. There's like six or eight different you know, human beings who are implicated. It's like a conspiracy to murder. Everyone's guilty. So they've uh, suffered that. And now they're waiting. You know, they're, they're going to take another body. And, and they, they automatically move up. You know, they're... they're but but, we, but if, if, if our karma, if we're just ordinary people, we don't, we're not chanting or anything, 
um, we're going we're gonna to suffer um, be- because of the sin that we committed and the hurt that we committed. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come back to us. And oftentimes it's like, seems a lot like worse than what we did. Like if you, if you eat meat, then what, every hair on the cow? Is like another year, you know, year in hell or something. I think if we get a thousand, a, th- a thousand years, Lord Chaitanya told the Kazi. So the uh, and, re- and we're coming on the, f- on the on the end of the fifth can- canto, and these these hells will be described, and it's hair raising. You know, well, you know, I don't want to eat any lobster. That's for sure. I get boiled in oil, for ten million years. So the the uh, the animals. They they're they're there waiting to inflict, but that's not all that the suffer you know the suffering. You're on your way to hell when when you're getting killed, you know, tormented by them. That's described by Kapiladev, I think, in his in his uh, instructions. And then there's all the suffering in hell by the by the agents of the of the of Yama Yamaraj. So, but the animals are moving on. They're going up, you know, after this episode. They're going up to uh, their next body. You know, and then gradually up to the human form. But what, what's what's uh, what you described, and, and it's not just the guru takes the karma, but when you chant, even one one time, if it's pure, meaning that you're not intending to, you know, get something material from it or whatever, uh, then so much karma is relieved. Krishna is very. It's all part of Krishna's uh, uh, desire to bring us back. He sees a little flicker of interest in me. They're chanting. They chanted one time, or they, you know, they've, they've tried it out. They've chanted one round, you know. So he's very eager to do everything to facilitate com- us coming back. <laughs> so he gets the, so many eons of karma are gone, you know. But you're always free to start the karma again. That's why I always wondered about that because, and there's also one verse, if not more, but there's no one in the Bhagavatam for sure that if you hear the holy name once then that also eliminates karma. Not just chant it, but hear it. And that's very encouraging for Harinam Sankirtan. So many people are hearing, a few, minimal are chanting on the way. And so, uh, wow, you know, these people are benefiting, they don't even know they're benefiting. But the problem is, is that the fan is still working. Fan is unplugged, your karma's gone, but then the fan is moving, and they're also moving away from the party, and then the, the, the modes of nature are there, the senses are there, they go into the restaurant and their first Big Mac, then they're on the, more karma. They renewed the karma. So what, that, that's the importance of the books, you know? And it used to be the magazine, some kind of literature where they can, uh, the intelligence can become affected and changed so that their interest will be peaked. And, they, and they, it's not just some ent- entertainment or something that's, you know, whatever. But it's really a very important process and they can, uh, they have hope. There's, there's some hope that they'll then uh, search out the further association and start to become devotees. And that's why in the you know, days, you know, we'd always have cards and we always have magazines with us on Harinam. Because you know, people are intrigued. A lot of people, they stop and look, you know, okay, take this card, come visit us, chant Hare Krishna, your life will be sublime. And uh, especially Reservoir of Pleasure, we give them out for 25 cents in those days, you know, and there's a whole bit of philosophy and, and, and phone numbers and all the, 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 we have a little uh, address list right there in the back of the, of the Reservoir of Pleasure. You can visit your local temple. So, so that, that's what devotees are doing. It's like, was it St. Peter, who was the fisher of men? Anyone know the Bible? You know, so we're trying to fish people out. We've been, we've been uh, fished out of the ocean. And we can always dive back in, but at least now we're <laughs> treading water at least. And uh, <laughs> so that's, that's the, the preaching mood, is that they don't know. If you know what's, what's here in the Bhagavatam, you know what's in store every time you bite into a Big Mac. You, you know, it'll give you pause, really. The whole idea is you have to be completely covered in order to engage fully in, in these sinful activities. With the blithe activity that does nothing to obey, you know. This is my heart of my freedom. I can drink what I want. I can seduce anybody I want, you know. No, there's someone watching. Wasn't that in a recent class? You know, Krishna's always watched. There's all these, you know, the sun, the moon, the super soul. And they're not just watching. They're taking notes. <laughs> That's so that uh, and and if you re- if you understand what's in store, that's why the the first lesson is so important. No, the death is not the end of everything. 
No, you can, it's not that you can do everything you want, that you go around once in life and that's the end. You, everything is, is there's, a, there's a laws, there's a universal law set by God. And you violate those laws and you'll be punished. And the pleasure you got is like insignificant compared to the suffering you're going to have. I, I, I was thinking of the verse of, uh, one of the verses of Prahlad, last time I quoted one, but the other one that I, my fav- one of my other favorites is also very pertinent. Uh, describing, you know, in many places of the Bhagavatam, the material miseries are descri- described and how to get out of them. So he says, Yasmat priya priya yoga sa yoga janma, shoka agnina sakrata yona shadayamana, dukkha shadam tada bidukkha mataddiyaham bhuman bhamame vadame tapadasya yoga. So this is a, uh, Prahlad, as he often does, you know, he's taking the role of a conditioned soul here. And, he, and he's saying, uh, in many different species, not just human species, I've been suffering in the fire of lamentation. And what causes it? Yes, my, yes, it's coming from this. Priya, apriya, viyoga, samyoga. Janma, it's born of this. The things that are dear to you, beginning with your body, and all the other things, and in normal life, relatives, everything, and you know, the things that give you pleasure, uh, those things are, t- are taken away, suddenly or gradually. And that causes great lamentation. And those things which are abominable, repugnant, which are, you're afraid of, terrifying, they're forced upon you. These two things cause a fire of lamentation. Shok in not in human life and even subhuman life. And also higher life. The devas are always worried they're going to lose their position and all these things. Sakata yona shadayamana. So there are the various remedies for this dukkha. Dukkha shadam. Right? We have military, we have med- medical science, we have uh, so many fallible soldiers. So dukkha shadam. Patada bidukkha. Those, those remedies themselves bring more dukkha. Just like here it's described how the, uh, the family life can, you know, you can exploit your child, the son or something. So I have uh, my father, you know, is my protector and he loves me so much, you know, this is one of the ways that the children feel safe and they feel, you know, not too much anxiety. When they, especially when they're very young and the parents aren't there, it's terrifying. So, that's great. But here we see that the, du- that the aushadi itself becomes the source of the misery. My beloved father is like taking my ornaments, you know? Or even if you hear, you know, the parents don't want the child anymore and, and this is happening, they're killing their, children, their own children. It's happening. Or I, I remember back in the 80s with the crack uh, cocaine epidemic when it hit. It, 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 uh, if you really get into that, it kills every other, um, you know, uh, normal emotion. And these, you know, People are smoking, 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 and the kid is crying in the corner for, for food. They're not even feeding the kid. Their own children. Their own children, they lost a feeling for that. Can you imagine that? Because of this drug. So, so duke aushadam tadabi dukam. The aushadi, the remedy itself becomes uh, a source of misery. And all because of tadiyaham. I'm thinking of something I'm not. I'm thinking I'm the body. I'm completely body, body conscious. So the last line is the remedy. He's there before Nishengadev. Bhuman, oh great Lord, Bhuman Brahmame Vadame Devatasya Yogam. I'm wandering every this wandering soul. Please instruct them in your Dasya Yoga, your Bhakti Yoga, yoga and how to perform service to you. So that's the, the universal uh Dukaushadi. It actually does conquer the miseries and it's the only one that does it. Otherwise it's a temporary reprieve and it's and it, it convinces you that I got it together, you know, now we, we have it together. No, you don't have it together. You know, you're just being set up for time and the end, you know, the three modes of nature that just knock you down and suffering. Suffering dukaush dukalium. Krishna says the same word, dukalium. It's an abode of misery. So that's a that's a, a, a perfect prime reason for taking up devotional service, taking up bhakti yoga. To relieve all these miseries and get it safe. But you find that you practice bhakti yoga and gradually the, the pleasures that come from the transcendental pleasure and the love of Krishna uh, eclipses that desire. And therefore you get the Lord Chaitanya, you know, Mamma Janmani Janmani Shude. Birth after birth, I don't care as long as I have your unmotivated devotional service. But to get to that point, one has to feel the urgency of, get, of getting out of this crazy world. 
So that's why there's plenty of plenty of that in our Shastra also. Okay, uh, Vijay Krishna, you're on. You still there? Yes, I'm still here. Hi, Bo. Dravida Prabhu, Dandabad Pranams. Hi, Bo. My question is, if necessity knows no law, why should I obey the rules and regulations related to spiritual advancement? As far as I know, the need for me to surrender to Krishna is urgent, is it not? Yeah. Why not, why not forcing Krishna to accept me as his devotee? Why? I'm sorry, I missed that. Why? What, Krishna? Why? Why, why not forcing Krishna to accept me as his devotee, if necessity knows no law? Yeah, well, well first of all, <laughs> what I get from this uh, English proverb... Uh, is that you're talking about material necessity? He's talking about when when you your uh, material desires, your needs uh, are, are great, or you're taking them as great. They can eclipse anything, even the normal feeling you have for your children, material necessity. But that that's that's body. That's the necessities of the body. We're taking the body's necessities as our own. This is the bodily concept of life. It's ignorance. It's false ego. That's a hunkar. So the, the, the uh, knowledge that, we, that we're getting is, is teaching us that the real necessity, our real necessity is the necessity of the soul. It's called swa'arta. With that verse, that they, that they would do, svarta gatimi vishnum. That's, that's the point. The previous verse is very important because the, first, the verse they is in there, in the beginning, te, and it refers back to the previous verse, and it's, it's kind of summarized in this, it's not that you're just chewing the chewed. It's that you're again and again and again and again chewing the chewed. That's your whole life. You're trying to en uh, enjoy material pleasures. And so, Mati uh, Krishna, you came to come. Adanta Gobi Vishatam Tamisram. You're in darkness, Tamisram, because of all, all the complete material absorption. Those people don't understand that their svarta, the real need of the soul, is Vishnu and, the, and reawakening in relation to Vishnu or Krishna. And therefore they remain blind and led by other blind men. And, they all, and what's the remedy? The only remedy? Taking a bath in the foot dust of the pure devotees. In other words, finding someone who's not in this condition, hearing from them, taking shelter and taking up devotional service, which wasn't about to happen for Hanyakashi Pool in that condition. You know, he didn't like to hear it. So, so that's the idea. It's, 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 it's which, which necessity are we going to follow? If it's just the bodily necessities, then we're no better than animals, and we're going to suffer like anything. But if we understand our necessity as souls, and we actually act on the basis of that knowledge, then we can actually put an end to all the suffering and dive into an ocean of bliss. So that, which, which is the better course? If you're intelligent or logical, obviously. <laughs> uh, yes, you have to meet, meet the material necessities, but not to exaggerate them. As, as it is said, Nothing else should be this goal of one's work, the arta. We're back to this word arta, that in the second chapter there, in the first cano, uh, Kamis and Indriyapi, one should not simply satisfy the desires of the senses. Life's uh, energy should be uh, directed toward inquiring into the absolute truth. Nothing else should be the goal of one's works. Is Jiva Sitatva Jigyasar, that's why it's a commentary. Bhagavatam is a commentary in the Vedanta Sutra. Tato Brahma Jigyasa, same idea. So it's a question of which necessity we're going to follow. And uh, the material necessities can completely take over if we let them. But we can live simply and not exaggerating the, the senses and serve the master of the senses with our senses. Is that okay, Vijay? Oh, uh, as usual, Dravida Prabhu, uh, right to the point, answer to my question, uh, if I may say it, breathtaking. Hare Krishna. <laughs> well, now that the pandemic is over, right, it's completely over, we can use that word again. Yes. Aboga Lila, go ahead, Prabhu. One thing I was also thinking in relation <clears throat> too, because when when Vijay Krishna mentioned how um, the necessity to become um, to make spiritual advancement, it's very urgent. So it also you could also say it applies to uh, you could say that our our necessity for making spiritual advancement knows no law. Because we see devotees, you know, when they join, 
you know, they leave their job, they leave their you yeah. know, school and everything <laughs> like that. And, um, you know, people think it's like, oh, it's so bad, you know, this and that. Um, and even some people may be agitated. Some people may be trying to convince us not to, but spirit, the, the necessity to make spiritual advancement. So you've had long. direct experience of that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> But um, something else I was thinking. Of. No, it, it's true. I, it's, it's a good point because we, yeah, throughout our scripture, we see, you know, radical steps taken. You know, was it, uh, Krishna's cover just left the next morning, you know, his, his family. And, uh, you know, the, the, it's in our culture. This taking of sannyas is, is the, the usual necessities you think, you know, that are that common are given up and you, you follow the ultimate necessity of the soul. You know, one, one, we have to follow one or the other. So it's a question of the choice. Thank you for that. That's a good insight. Okay, I think it's time to adjourn. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hari Hari Bo. Hare Krishna.